that test alone right there, that I feel should illustrate the difference between these two. The LXT did it, the XGT flew through it as if it weren't there. So, hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Tonight we are gonna settle the question of how much of a performance gain do you get when you move from LXT to XGT? So let's get into that today on Tinker with Tools. So ever since I got the new XGT combo kit with the hammer drill and the impact driver, one thing I wanted to know is were they going to be better than the 18 volt counterparts from Makita? When you pay a price premium for something, you expect to get a performance or quality gain. And since the quality of Makita was already fairly high, I wanted to see a performance gain. Well, we're gonna get into the impact drivers in future weeks, but tonight we're gonna to tackle the hammer drills and we're gonna figure out, do you get a performance gain by going with the 40 volt hammer drill or are you simply going to be similar to what you get from the LXT? Let's get right into the testing and then we'll come back for the conclusion and wrap everything up. We're gonna start first with the LXT. Has a fully charged five amp hour battery and we are gonna be in drill mode in speed two to start. That is a nice drill. Of course, at this price point, they're pretty much all nice drills. All right, and for the XGT, we do have a fully charged 2.5 amp hour battery. It is the same five amp hour equivalent. They're both 90 watt hour batteries. We are going to be in speed two and speed two in drill mode on this as well. All right, now, much the same, we are gonna do a six inch specs, first with the LXT. The XGT features some anti-kickback technology, so it does stop it from twisting out of your hands. Uh, just even going back to the 18 volt, you can see that already. Now with the XGT, so far, both seem very powerful. It's just very clear that one is more powerful. All right, and now back to the LXT with a five inch power lag. Now the XGT, same test. At this point, I'd almost say it's too close to call. I think the XGT is winning, but especially in the smaller fasteners, I have not noticed that the LXT is really that much slower. All right, and now a six inch Timberlock with the LXT. With anything smaller than an eight inch Timberlock, you really blink and it's almost over. Okay, six inch for the XGT. All right, and now LXT with an eight inch timber lock. I was beginning to wonder if it would be able to do that in speed two. Okay, now at XGT. Wow, that test alone right there, that I feel should illustrate the difference between these two. The LXT did it, the XGT flew through it as if it weren't there. All right, so we are first going to be starting out with the LXT. We are still in speed two. We're gonna be doing a single one inch hole from a Diablo sp spaddle bit. Uh, previously we were using Bosch, they got dull. These are the comparable things from Home Depot that they sell now. Now with the XGT, same bit, still in speed two. And now we are gonna be moving on to the one inch spider boring bit, still in speed two with the LXT. All right, and now with the XGT. All right, now we are moving up to the four x four and we have a one and a quarter inch spider spade bit, uh, self-eating spade bit with the LXT. Well, it let go of the bit. That's probably more my fault than anything. All right, and now with the XGT still in speed two. 
We are now moving on to the inch and a half spider self-feeding spade bit, and this is the LXT. We are in speed two. It did cut out, but it didn't cut out until we were through the wood. XGT. It was through. We are going to count that as its time when I reached down and felt. Okay, LXT in speed two with the inch and three quarter Irwin speed bore bit. Okay, we are dropping it to speed one. So now the XGT is on the final test, still in speed two. You needed any clearer picture that although they look the same, they're roughly the same weight, the 40 volts on this tool really makes a difference. So without going to the conclusion yet, I can say that this drill is worth the XGT premium. All right, so when it comes to Makita, I really don't think you can pick a bad hammer drill out of the two of these, but there is a difference between the two of these. While I'm, well, I don't suspect I'm gonna to see too much of a difference in the impact drivers, the hammer drills, you do see a noticeable difference in the speed it takes to drive a fastener or drill a hole. And you notice it, the more demanding the task gets, the more that drill shine. It really is impressive what it can do. And I will be surprised if when I show you the results right after this, we don't see it near the top of all of our drills, if not at the top. So that turned out to be the understatement of the century. Not only was the Makita 40 volt the fastest drill that we have tested, but it was actually faster than the next fastest drill by 35%. That second place was the Flex using the five amp hour battery. Now I suspect you would see some improved results if I went with stacked lithium there, but I'm telling you, the 40 volt Makita is the most impressive drill I've tested to date, and it would be my pick if I had to recommend anyone a single drill with price not being a factor. It's that impressive, it is the best drill on the market today, in my opinion. So when it comes down to differences in these two drills, obviously the battery platform is first and foremost. If you don't wanna be paying the premium for all of your tools that you're going to pay with XGT, then maybe that's not the platform for you. But if you do wanna see bigger power when it comes to those bigger draw tools, I do think it's a great platform for you to get on. You're gonna get that traditional Makita quality, but you're getting it with a more advanced battery platform. Now, when it comes to the diff other differences, one of the biggest differences is going to be how you interact with the clutch. If I'm being honest, I don't love the electronic interface of the XGT. It offers greater variability or greater degree of adjustment, but the way you interact with it is a little bit clunkier. You have to be in screw mode, that's the same on both drills, but then you have to unlock it and adjust it and then you can drive your fastener to the thing you want. There are so many different options that it might be a take you a little while to get used to it before you can get it dialed in exactly how you want. It is different than just about any drill you're going to see on the market, and anytime you have a feature that stands out like that, I feel like it just takes a little bit more effort to adopt it and get used to it because we're so pre-wired to doing it the other way. There is something to be said for the mechanical adjustment of the clutch ring and just how simple it is to be able to adjust and how familiar you are with it. If you put these two tools in a bag and reached in and tried to tell which one was the other, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference between the two of them. They do have a slightly different shape, but for the most part, they are almost the exact same drill. Both feel great to use. Both are well-made and feel like they're super high quality. And I think that's what you get when you're buying Makita. So when it comes down to it, Pick the one that's going to work for you, but if you do want that superior performance, XGT is where you're gonna to wanna to be, and I think we're gonna see it develop further and further as time goes on, and these two will start to diverge even more in the future. So if you've used either one of these drills, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below whether you've had good experiences or bad experiences so we can share those with the rest of the viewers. Hit that like button if you like what you saw today, and if you wanna keep seeing more content from Tinker With Tools, go ahead and hit subscribe and check the bell button so you can get notified when I put out new content. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time on Tinker With Tools.